Jane Lowe at the ASEAN Cybersecurity Centre of Excellence here in Singapore and just right across from the Raffles, uh, the historic uh, and iconic uh, Raffles Hotel. And uh, today we will be talking about PowerShell malware detection analysis. And I'm very, very pleased and very privileged to have an expert on this uh, topic. And uh, Shinogi, who is the uh, Chief uh, Security Researcher and engineer with Manika. Yep, Manika. Yes. Manika, that's right. <laughs> yep, yep. Managed to get that right. Um, and he will be sharing with us, you know, some of the um, highlights from his uh, workshop earlier. So thank you very much, uh, Shinogi, for your uh, time today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So Shinogi, just uh, to start off, can you just give a brief introduction about yourself as, as well yeah, as your role? Sure. So uh, I'm from Japan. I belong to a company called Makunika Networks, and uh, we we are doing the cybersecurity. Uh, basically, we are a distributor, but um, we have a research center, and I'm uh, one of the researcher of that center. And uh, usually, I'm doing the malware research, or sometimes developing some penetration testing tools. Right, and of course, they are here on a week-long uh, cybersecurity camp help at yep. this center. And at this cybersecurity camp, we have about, uh, I believe, 48 students from Asia. So uh, not just from Japan, but also South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, of course, Malaysia. Australia uh, or... Yeah, and in Vietnam. Yep, right, yep. And, and the aim and goal of the camp, obviously, is to de develop the next generation of cyber defenders yep. to defend against uh, all these threats that we are seeing. So before we start uh, talking about malware, PowerShell malware yep. detection, tell us about these um, talent, cybersecurity talent development in Japan. And in what, Japan, yep. Yeah, and what do you think that you'll bring back from your week-long sort of experience here mm. back to Japan? Yep, so in Japan, we also have a sec uh, so-called security camp and uh, we bring some students mm -hmm. to it's a one week like summer oh, camp right. okay and uh, so uh, from my point of view I think this event is quite similar but global uh, in Japan of course we only have the Japanese student right so I believe the student here uh, which coming from Japan has a better experience mm -hmm. to not talking only about the Japanese oh, right. but also another idea for um, other countries. Right, and, uh, okay. I think it's, it's a very important to, especially when we want to build a career as a global uh, personnel. So I think it's a great opportunity for the student to come here. Uh, yeah, and um, we also have some uh, like a CTF types of competition for the cybersecurity. Mm. And uh, the funny part is that the students are sometimes better than the professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I think the, both the, like a, this kind of training or a boot camp or the, the competition is uh, both are a very important role for the, um, to raise the next generation security experts. Right, yep. yeah. Um, you talked about uh, exchanging like sort of views from yep. different countries yep, and yep. that's very important in cybersecurity. Yep. Of course, we talk about cyber, um, cyber attacks being a borderless you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. uh, challenge. Yep. Yep. And so the threats that we see in, say, that may come from uh, Singapore, for example, mm -hmm. may spread to Japan within yep. seconds. So yep. it's yep. very important to have that, build that relationship globally, isn't yeah, it, yeah, from yeah, young. Yeah. 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 Okay, right. So let's uh, have a quick uh, sort of highlight of your uh, workshop session okay. on PowerShell uh, malware analysis. So tell us, why is PowerShell threat so important to understand? Okay, so uh, when some attackers try to attack a Windows environment, uh, which I believe most organization, uh, most of the employees has a Windows uh, laptop, right? Uh, nowadays, some companies switch to macbook i guess but uh, uh still the windows is still the majority of the the laptop mm -hmm. os or sometimes it can be the iis for the server or uh the email server for example the exchange is uh, also popular as well so when we have this kind of uh targets we it's very common to see a PowerShell script used in some part of the whole attack scenario. And... Um, what are the famous incidents? So recently, you may know about the Emotet. It is right. uh, infamous malware. And uh, Emotet itself is 
the, the last part of emotet is going to be the executable. Uh, it's not a PowerShell script, but to install the emotet, mm. the, the attacker group used a PowerShell to, to download the emotet and to implant the emotet into the laptop. Mm -hmm. So PowerShell is used in, in some part uh, of the whole emotet attack scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, the PowerShell is also used uh, uh, not not just in uh, loading the malware mm. right into the environment, but it's also used in um, other uh, yes, scenarios other part, as well. Yes. So uh, what we s uh, observed is, for example, when the attack, the cyber attack, is a kind of like a backdoor type attack instead of uh, ransomware or banking malware. Yeah. Then the attacker tried to like steal information. Mm. Like a, uh, it can be the personal information or confidential information and but the goal for, from the attacker the, the goal is not only to infect the backdoor in the into the computer but the attacker may need to go to some like a database server or some file server in that case the backdoor is not enough and the attacker may need to steal some credential to go to other hosts or other servers then finally get the data that they want. So in this case, uh, we often see the PowerShell based like hacking tool mm. uh, used. And uh, I think that one of the most popular tools is called Mimikatz. It can steal some credential uh, from the Windows uh, host. Right, okay. So um, yeah, so talking about PowerShell, and you, you mentioned that it's uh, an important threat because it's installed in, well, because many companies use Windows. Yes. Um, right, um, and why is it a good tool for the attackers? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. So the reason a lot of attackers use the PowerShell, um, I think there's actually two reasons, and one is so-called fileless malware. And um, if you imagine a traditional antivirus, most of the like a security, the endpoint security antivirus check the file, and uh, if a new file is created on the hard drive, mm. the antivirus driver will check the I/O, the input the output and uh, they will check whether the new file is malicious or not. Yep. And this is how the traditional uh, antivirus works. And, but in, when we use the PowerShell, we don't need to store any file on the, on the hard drive, and, but um, we can directly load a malicious script into the memory, then just run it from the memory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the attacker doesn't need to touch the file systems, so it it makes hard to detect and uh, hard to do the forensics as well. Right, so there's no course. any evidence no trust remaining e, right. on, on the yeah, hard right. disk. So okay. this was the first uh, reason. Right. And uh, we have m one more reason, um, which is the obfuscation. And uh, if you don't do the malware analysis, I think it's gonna be the first time to hear that, the obfuscation. Uh, it's basically uh, make it hard to analyze the source code. So uh, there's a bunch of different ways to perform the obfuscation, but basically it's a kind of encrypt something or encode some data or change the representation or the format of the data. And uh, when we have an obfuscated partial script, it's very hard to figure out what this script is gonna do. Right. Uh, unless we do the de-obfuscation. Yeah. Right, okay. so it's all sort of jumbled up, isn't it, into like a non-recognizable alpha numeric yeah, 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 of exactly. characters. Yes. Right, okay. Yep. And of course you talk about um, there's some tools out there that can help with the detection, even though yes. it's you know, um, obfuscated. So tell yep. us about some of these detections. Yes, so this is exactly what we did during the, this cybersecurity camp. Uh, the Windows provide a feature called a script block logging, or actually it's a partial script block logging, and uh, it allow us to log all of the execution of the PowerShell. And um, w once the PowerShell is executed, the, the source code of the PowerShell will be stored in the, inside the event log, and we can collect the event log and we can, <coughs> we can parse it to, to get the original source code of 
a partial script. Mm -hmm. So even if it's obfuscated, in, inside the log we will see the obfuscated script and the unobfuscated script as well. Right, okay. Yeah. And that was also my other question earlier. Mm. So you have, um, you managed to de-obfuscate yep. the, the script yep. so you can see clearly what is happening. Yep. So at that point, then, how do you filter the bad stuff from the good stuff? So this is also a great question, and uh, I think it totally depends on how you implement the security um, like solutions. Or, okay. and, uh, but this is exactly what I asked to the student to, to try. So basically, I did a hackathon, and uh, for, there was uh, eight groups. So the 48 people divided in eight, eight groups. They had to develop a function mm -hmm. to which tell is this partial source code is malicious or not. And um, there was some like a blacklisted, blacklist keywords. So th some teams use blacklist keywords. Some te teams use AI. Oh. Uh, AI they, they build uh, machine learning. Oh, they, wow, they use cool. machine learning and they build the model right. to, to, to detect. Oh, malicious. quite fancy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Where some um, students focus on to check whether the script is obfuscated or not, because having the obfuscation is already indicates that it's malicious. Ah, right, of yeah, course, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, there was a different uh, ideas and uh, yeah, it was quite interesting as well. Yeah. Oh, so you mentioned about uh, blacklist uh, yes, words. Yes. Can, you, can you tell us one or two of these? What yeah, else? so for example, uh, I mentioned about the tool called Mimikatz, uh, which can steal the credential for Windows. And um, inside the Mimikatz, there's a keyword Mimikatz, right? <laughs> so okay. we can, this can be also one of the, the blacklist keyword, for example. And of course, it's too specific. It can only detect Mimikatz, of course. But uh, the PowerShell has a lot of built-in functions, but some function only used in malware sometimes. So this function can be also uh, inside the blacklist, right? right? Okay. So yeah, then, then the, these uh, keywords become more uh, generic to, to catch more malware, not only just one specific malware. Yeah. Right, so the AI, uh, so talk, talk, talk to us about some of these AI solutions that the students yep. built. What, um, what kind of uh, data did they use to, you know, for the AI to learn from? Yep. Yeah, oh, that's a good question as well, I think. So um, I provided some Marsha script and some B9 script, good script for them. But I only provided, I think, uh, less than 100 scripts in mm. total. But uh, surprisingly, they, some teams prepare like 4,000 samples <laughs> they collected from the internet, from GitHub. Wow, or excellent. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is how they, they, they use for, for the learning, yes. Right, right. I think it's very, very encouraging to hear that the uh, students are so uh, creative and also yeah. very, uh, very, seems very up to speed. And mm -hmm. I think we can re be rest assured that our next generation of cyber defenders are going to be more sophisticated than yep, the yep. current generation. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, right. Yeah, it's a good feature. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So, uh, yeah, so thank you very much, Ashinogi, for uh, spending some time with us to talk to us about the workshop that you conducted on PowerShell malware detection analysis and also some of your insights on uh, building capacity and talents in cybersecurity in Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, you know, we are able to continue this uh, international exchange of uh, ideas and knowledge yeah. and skills. So thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank Shinogi. you. It was my pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.